Hello everybody, welcome back to Work and Energy, and today we are talking about power. You guys see what I did here with the horses? Horsepower? You know, power? Alright, here we go. Alright, power is the rate at which work is done. So the rate at which work is done. What that means is how much work you do, but divided by how quickly do you do it. So the faster you do a certain amount of work, the more power you produce. The longer it takes you to do a certain amount of work, the less power you produce. Okay? All right, so let's look at this. Uh, maybe important to know, not really too important, but one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. All right, let's look at this. A child pulls horizontally on a wagon with a force of 75 newtons. If the wagon moves 42 m meters in three minutes, what is the power generated by the child? Okay, so what we have, we're going to call this the wagon. The child's going to push on it with a force of 75 newtons. This wagon is going to go 42 meters in a time of three minutes or uh, 180 seconds. Knowing that, let's figure out how much work is done and then how much power is done. So work force is 75, displacement is 42. And since force and displacement are going in the same direction, it's gonna be cosine of zero, which is gonna give us, let's see, 75 times 42. 3,150 joules. But we should know that power is equal to work divided by time. So this means 3,150 joules divided by 180 seconds is going to give us 17.5 watts. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on. A car needs to generate 75 horsepower in order to maintain a constant velocity of 27.3 meters per second. What is the magnitude of the total resistive force acting on the car? Okay, so this is a little bit interesting to know. So as we know, power is equal to work divided by time. What we should also know is power is equal to force times the distance traveled times cosine of theta divided by time. So I want you guys to look at this a little bit carefully and see if there's a way you can manipulate it. One way you should notice you can manipulate it is we have force times the, uh, if we look at this, times displacement over time, and we can't force times the velocity uh, is also equal to power, okay? Times uh, cosine of theta, okay? So force times velocity is another form of power. So we can say that the power is equal to the force. Ooh, ooh, we know what the power is, 75 horsepower. So I'm going to just do 75 times 746 to find what it is in watts. And we get 55,950. 950 watts is equal to the force times the distance, or times, sorry, times the velocity, which is 27.3. You're going to use this formula many times when something is moving with a constant velocity. So that's a key indication of using this formula force times velocity. We're going to divide by 27.3. And uh, what we have is 2,049 newtons. Okay. And that's what we see as the resistance force. Okay. And we know, we know that there's going to be a resistance force because if there's a force acting on it like this, and it's moving with a constant speed, that means there has to be another resistive force that's equal to it. Or else, if, if only one of them was here, it'd be accelerating. But since it's not accelerating, they have to be canceling out. So this is 2049, and this is 2049. Okay. All right, moving on. Example 19. A 1,500 kilogram accelerates from 0 to 25 meters per second in 7 seconds. What is the average power delivered by the engine? Okay, so what we have here is we have this car, right? And it's going to go from zero to, it's going to be going a lot faster, 25 meters per second in an elapsed time of seven seconds. So we know that work, uh, power is equal to work divided by time. What we should also know is this power is equal, work is the same thing as change in energy divided by time. Okay, so we can interchange this. So power is equal to the change in energy. There's no potential energy. It doesn't say that the height increases or decreases, so just kinetic energy. So we're going to do 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared divided by t. Ooh, let me put this over here. Sorry, I'm going all over the place. P 
power is equal to 1 half m, 1500, the final square, which is 25 squared, minus 0, because initial velocity is 0. So this is 0. So all this divided by the time, which is 7 seconds. And let's plug that into our calculus to see what happens. 25 squared times 1500 times 0.5 divided by 7. And we get around 66,964 joules. Okay. And that's what we, oh, not joules, watts. That's how much power is provided by the car. And a lot of times you hear about horsepower with cars and everything like that. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, all right, actually, that's pretty much it. We're talking about work not conserved next time, so I'll see you for that. Thanks for watching, guys.